Hi, I'm Phil the Blythe. Gala Dionysia, Yo Saturnalia, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Ave Sol Invictus, Happy Belated Hanukkah, Glad Yule, and a Happy New Year and um, any other December holidays. If there's a December holiday that you celebrate that I didn't mention, feel free to wish people a merry one in the comments. And I was going for more of an Arwen look today, but I think I look a little bit more like Elrond, but you know, he's important too. We can't all be Arwen. Anyway. This video, as voted in my community tab, is not a redux of the Attic Festivals, but rather a look at how to adapt any festival into your personal praxis. Also, if you're not sure what I mean by community tab, YouTube on my channel, I have a community tab and I post things there every so often. Sometimes YouTube lets you know. Check that out. Sometimes I post polls, other fun extra behind the scenes things. So feel free to check out my community tab. I also highly recommend Aaliyah Kai's video on the Attic Calendar. I'll link that right over here. Their video covers really in depth how the calendar works because their calendar is a lunar calendar and ours is not. They cover how the calendar works as well as a brief overview of the entirety of the Athenian calendar. And they have some videos that are focused on certain festivals as well. If you have ever done any research to any Greek festival, you will notice that there are a lot of them, likely hundreds of them, especially when taking other city-states into account. It can be extremely overwhelming just looking at the Attic calendar, let alone any other polis. I know I was very overwhelmed the first time I saw it. I was like, I don't know what any of this means. You have to contend with a couple of things. Number one, it is a lunar calendar, meaning that the months are tied to the cycles of the moon, unlike our calendar, which is very much not a lunar calendar, and also it's not actually that accurate, and we came up with a more accurate system, but we elect to use the inaccurate system, which means that we have to have a leap year and a leap day, and there's even a leap second, but <laughs> it's not a video on calendars. Number two, you have to contend with the fact that it is a lunar calendar, meaning we have to uh, try to figure out where their months fit into our months. And also, we don't know what all the dates are. Sometimes we only have the dates for a festival, but we don't know the dates of the month. Like, we don't know where that month lines up. So it just gets very confusing. There's a couple people, a couple of Hellenic polytheists I know, who are currently trying to reconstruct certain calendars, and boy howdy, is it a trip. Um, bless them, honestly. Doing the gods work, let me tell you. And then number three, even if you do know the dates, when the festival fell in a month and when that corresponds in our calendar, we don't always have all the information. Sometimes we have all the dates, everything set in stone, but we just have a name. We don't have anything beyond a name. Usually the name will clue us into kind of what the festival might be about or who is worshipped, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we just have a name and that's it. So this is not even counting the fact that ancient Greek festivals had large processions, days-long celebrations, elaborate offerings that would cost more than a home, and complex community-centric rituals, many of which are just impossible in today's world. I would argue that it is literally impossible to reconstruct an exact ancient Greek festival because it would need a lot of things from ancient Greek society that just don't exist today. So understandably, it can be daunting to try to reconstruct this, considering you're contending with missing information, weird calendars that we're not familiar with, and expectations that we just literally cannot meet. And sometimes by adapting them, they become exactly what the festivals were not, which is simple, short, and solo. But it doesn't have to be scary. It can be fun, actually. In fact, for me, trying to figure out how to adapt festivals is one of my favorite things to do. And once you familiarize yourself with the basic ancient Greek ritual format and the purpose, time, and expression of festivals, you can begin to adapt them fairly quickly. As a note, this video will be very generalized. I'm not going to really go into any detail about any of the festivals that I mentioned beyond how they apply to some of these structures and outlines that I'm going to be going over. This video would literally be an entire college semester if I tried to do that, so that will not be the case. I'll give examples for context for understanding, but this video will be mostly about personal reconstruction. So what is the aforementioned basic ritual format TM? The following outline is not just like an arbitrary collection of 
thoughts I had. This based on the work of several reconstructionists who came before me, most notably Labrys, Helenion, Drew Campbell, and the wonderful Helena Polytheus over on the Eros Alliance Discord server. Shout out! I've restructured some of the elements and combined others into one to just make it even more simple. But these are also in a rough approximated order. You will not always see them exactly in this order. You don't have to do them exactly in this order. And sometimes they're shuffled around, repeated multiple times, or some aspects are omitted entirely. This is just, again, a rough approximation. And this ritual format and then the the ritual format and then the festival structure or festival questions will all be linked below in a Google Doc for you to mull over and look over. So let's begin. Procession. Procession can be anything from marching between two cities to walking from your door to the altar. Purification. From blindfolds and pouring pig's blood on your head to just simply washing your hands. Both of those count as a form of purification. Hymns and prayers, songs, myths, calling in specific epithets, prayers, and poetry of all kinds. These are often read or sung. Offerings, from offering a 30-foot statue in immaculate woven peplos that you've worked on for an entire year to burning a stick of incense that you bought this morning. Feasting, the root of the word festival is actually feast. No festival is complete without it. Even festivals that often involved fasting would conclude with a feast. Now that you've seen a standard ritual formula, you can begin to imagine how you can change it and adapt it to your needs. This can also not just be for festivals, this can also just be for any ritual that you would like to do. For various reasons, it is also helpful to look at festivals through this lens of a ritual format and try to identify how these various aspects appear throughout them. This can also really help because that ritual format that I read for you can easily be done solitarily. Someone you can adapt a, a festival to that ritual format and you can then figure out how to do something that was once super community oriented by yourself in your bedroom. Let's take the festival of Thargelia as an example. This was to Apollo the averter of evil and well as to Demeter Chloe. Although evidence for Apollo is stronger so I really won't talk that much about Demeter in this. So this is an easy one that we can see. There was a procession in which two scapegoats, so two individuals who were chosen to bear the, the miasma of the city, if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's my purification and Hellenism video. It's a common way to do this in scapegoats. Usually it wasn't people though, usually it was like animals or, or little like statues. But this was big, so they got two people, they would chase them around the city, pelting them with squill and stuff, and this would then purify it once they were driven out of the city. So this combines procession and purification. Then the following day, offerings of first fruits are prepared to Apollo. Given that Apollo was Uranic, I think we can likely ascertain that this meal was probably also shared amongst the people. Now we have feasting. There was also a time of hymns, some sort of contest in which the winner would receive a tripod that would be then dedicated to Apollo. So this we got the hymns. So we have all of our little checklists here. We've got procession, purification, hymns, offerings, and finally. Now that you've looked at this basic ritual format, there are several categories that you consider when tailoring this to festivals in particular and not just a regular ritual or big offering that you're doing to the gods. So that would be purpose, time, and expression. Also a reminder, you don't have to have an answer to any or all of these questions. These questions are just food for thought for ways in which you can begin to look at and consider festivals. I, I actually would encourage you to look at modern day festivals and holidays through this lens. The first in our categories is purpose. Who is it for? It's helpful to consider who this festival was intended for. Was it a, a woman's only mystery night? Which city-state is it from? Attic, Laconian, Delphic? And is it tied to that city's specific mythology? Who is it to? What god, daemon, hero, etc. is traditionally venerated? If it's to multiple, how are these gods related? And what specific epithet is called in? Demeter Chloe, Dionysus Linaios, Zeus Gamos, etc. etc. Why is the festival done? What does one hope to gain from the festival? Is it to purify the city of disease? Is it a celebration and thanks for the harvest? Is it to unveil the mysteries and achieve a better afterlife? Is it to prepare the earth for planting and appease Demeter in hopes of a good crop season? Identifying this is one of the best ways to figure out how you want to adapt the festival. Figuring out the why. What myths does the festival relate to? Most festivals are tied to myths. 
Some of these myths we have in writing and are well known. Others are only through illusions that we can only ascertain through the festivals themselves. Is it based on a founding myth such as the Panopsia with Theseus and Athens? Is it based on the marriage of Hera and Zeus as in Theogamia? Is it about the ages of man when time and roles were reversed as with the Cronia? Many festivals relate to multiple myths, ones we have recorded of and ones we do not, and some are various versions that we don't usually see. This then brings us to time. What season does this festival take place in? Now this is a complicated question. It can be really helpful and also understandably complex to understand what seasons were in ancient Greece and to specifically then identify what season a festival might have taken place in. This is not going to be a video on how to do that. I honestly struggle a lot to figure out seasons in an area that I don't live in. Like I, I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, I can't imagine being in New Zealand in Australia right now when Christmas is in the summertime. Like, pfft. I know for a fact that most of you who watch my channel are not from Greece. Yes, I can see the analytics. <laughs> and those are not familiar with the Greek climate. Familiarizing yourself roughly with how the seasons work in Greece can help clear up confusion as to why certain things are done at certain times. Was a festival during the planting season? Was it during the harvest? This can be one of the most tricky ones, obviously, considering it's hard sometimes for people to grasp seasons that they don't live in, especially for me. I have trouble with that. I'm also a fan of adapting things to where you live. I talked a bit about this in my previous video on personal syncretism and celebrating the winter solstice as someone who is a Hellenic polytheist and lives in a place that is not Greece and gets very cold. And it's sometimes hard to connect to, say, a festival of planting when the place that you are in is frozen. So how long did the festival last? Some festivals were two days, some were three, some were seven, eight, or nine, some were only a night. Many times each day had a specific purpose, as with the Hyakinthia, for example. But more often than not, we don't have the luxury of... Hey, can you not... This little man is interrupting me and knocking stuff around. Sir, I'm gonna banish you. He's so dumb, he has no thoughts. Anyway, hopefully he doesn't do that again. I don't have time for that. Most of us don't have the luxury of spending eight days celebrating Lanaya. Sometimes we also can't even spend a weekend celebrating something. I often have had to condense multi-day festivals into a single evening. That's why knowing the elements of each festival can help you then condense it to touch on each moment that is important. What festivals does it relate to? What other festivals can this be connected to? Skira, the Mysteries, Haloa, Thesmophoria, the various crop cycles of Demeter, or Theophania, which happened twice a year in Delphi with the leaving and the returning of Apollo. Not all festivals are connected to each other, but some festivals are connected. It can be helpful to try to figure out which ones those are. Also, if you hear rustling below, my cat is just... He's just having the time right now. How old is the festival? This is probably one of the most difficult ones to suss out and to wrestle with, given that most scholars argue a lot with each other about this over various festivals. Some festivals appear to be a little bit more modern, like City Dionysia. Others of them appear very ancient, with no identifiable myth that we don't know why people are doing what they're doing. And so others are very old, but also very established, such as the Eleusinian Mysteries. And finally, probably the most fun category, expression. What is done during the festival? Finally, the what that is actually done during a festival. This relates strongly to the basic ritual format. Are there processions of purification? Are special crafts made for the festival as an offering? Are there contests of might? Is there initiation? Is there performance? And then finally, what makes this festival different from others? What makes this festival unique? What makes Lanaya different than Dionysia? What makes Anthesteria different than Thargalia. While many festivals include elements from the basic ritual format, each of them have their own unique elements that were not found in other festivals. Whether that's dressing up as a bear in Munikia, elaborate theatrics for Dionysia, weaving a giant peplos for Panathenia, burden a wooden effigy of an oaken bride in the Daedala. Each festival has its own thing that makes it unique, and finding that can be extremely fun to adapt, like doing a little bit of improv for Dionysia, or weaving a, a little potholder for Panathenia, or 
making a little popsicle effigy and burning it for the Daedala. Again, these questions are not meant to confuse you more, but to help you get to the core, the crux of a festival. Once you get to that crux of a festival, you can reconstruct it in a way that works for you. How do we take these festivals, communal, extravagant, and long, and turn them into what I called them before, something that is so low, simple, and short? And do you have to celebrate all the festivals? What about if there are pieces of information missing? What if I like a festival, but we don't know what the date is? What if I want to move the date around? All of these are valid questions, and I can't answer all of them for you. A lot of it comes down to your own personal philosophy. Can I help you? I guess he wants to help today. You, of course, <laughs> what do you want? You, of course, don't have to celebrate all the festivals. That would be literally impossible to celebrate every single ancient Greek festival. You'd be doing something like every day. Right? Oh God, <laughs> he's gonna go steal my sunlight now instead. Anyway, I don't even celebrate everything in the Athenian calendar. In fact, I don't even think I celebrate half of the festivals in the Athenian calendar. And you don't even have to celebrate festivals at all, or you can do it very infrequently. You can begin to develop your own festival calendar based on what festivals that you feel are important to you and your personal practice. Maybe you feel close to a Dionysus as he relates to actors and drama. Maybe you love the myth of Apollo and his lover Hyakinthos. And maybe you see Hera and, and adore her as a force of her own. So you take Dionysia from the Attic calendar, Hyakinthia from the Doric, and Daedala from Boedia. I also can't stress this enough. You don't have to have it all figured out right away. My first year as a Hellenic polytheist, I didn't celebrate any festivals, not a single one. And I really didn't even start celebrating them until like halfway through my second year as a Hellenic polytheist. I know folks who have been Hellenic polytheists for a long time who don't celebrate any festivals. You can also keep it simple and go with the reconstructed Athenian calendar because we have that, that's really accessible constantly reconstructed. We know very well when those dates were. I'll link below some calendars, including Grape and Fig's wonderful 2022 calendar, as well as festival resources, information, both Athenian and beyond. Missing pieces of information and or dates. This is why I had 900 questions in the previous section. It's not about answering all the questions. You're never going to answer all the questions. If you can answer all the questions, one, you're probably looking at weird sources. And two, you must be some sort of real good scholar because I don't think I can answer all of those questions, even at the most well-documented festivals. If you can understand the myth, understand the season, understand who it is to and the meaning, or just one or of those things, you can begin to formulate your own method of expression. If you're missing the date, but you have other information, say who it was to, what is done during the festival, perhaps then you can figure out maybe what season it was done in. Or maybe you know what season it was done in and who it was to, but you don't know what was done. By knowing those two things, you can at least approximate, perhaps based on other festivals, what might have been done during this festival. And this is the part where revivalism really comes in handy of figuring out and divining what works for you, your own personal gnosis. So the other thing, being solitary. Ancient Greek festivals were entirely communal. I think I can say that with confidence that they, they were communal festivals. They were done in groups, whether that was a small group or an entire city, they were done in groups. However, by and large, a lot of Hellenic polytheists today are solitary practitioners, or at the very least, small groups in person or groups that are online, which present their own sort of unique problem. I do my best rituals when I'm in person with other people. Now, this is obviously not always doable, whether that's world circumstances, or the fact that not until like last month met another Hellenic polytheist in my area. And I also live in a city. I have the privilege of living in a city that is very open. However, I've actually never done another festival in IRL with another Hellenic polytheist. I've only ever done it with other pagans or people who identify as witches. But by and large, what I do is solitary. The basic ritual format is your friend in this case. I have used it all the time when I'm doing festivals. In my little book that I have where I document certain rituals and festivals that I do, I use that format as a guide to how I want to structure how I'm celebrating that festivals. I see festivals as really a way to meditate on and get to know a certain aspect of a god, a myth, or a meaning. It can be a time for divination or making a special meal or burning a specific candle. I actually struggle a lot with regular worship schedules. The festivals are actually a really beneficial time for me to set aside time for a specific god. 
You can also see festivals as a time to make art or make tools in service of the gods or do something in service of the gods. I made prayer beads for Apollo and Hyakinthos during the Hyakinthia. I made a mask for Dionysus for Lanaya. They're just like kind of like little containers of focus for me. I'm not really gonna touch on group rituals either in person or online because I have a sneaking suspicion most of you are solitary. And also group ritual dynamics are an entirely different conversation. If you're interested in having that conversation though, please let me know in the comments. So adapting festivals and creating your own. All of this video has been about how to examine a festival and find its core and then adapt it for your practice. I'm not gonna give you the answers. I don't think there's a one answer fits all for how to adapt a festival. Let's take Dionysia, for example. Dionysia was something that I just celebrated. I'm originally, it was at the beginning of last week, but I moved it to this past weekend because I didn't have time. I moved it slightly to when I had time. Dionysia was a very large festival of theatrics to Dionysus. We just had rural Dionysia where troops of actors would go around with the popular plays from that year. Celebrations would accompany it. Aliakai has a video on Dionysia up here, which I will link. So this year I celebrated this past weekend by making um, gingerbread cookies, which was just prime hilarity and offering the first of that to Dionysus. I then set up a tripod with a pine candle on it, given that pine is associated with him, pine cones specifically too. And then I'd set up the mask that I'd made earlier this past year for Lanaya. My housemates and I went to Christmas Revels, which is just really a grand time of singing and dancing and early music and audience participation. Oh, my cat is stealing my sunlight. No, I offered my going to this as an act for him and Dionysia. When I got back, I made spiced cider again, offering the steam and offering a bit of my cup from it for him. Then with my mask and thyrsus in hand, I read the Orphic Cam to Dionysos and my husbands and I performed an absolutely bonkers piece of theater, getting dressed up and everything. I placed the mask of him and the thyrsus on the couch and we performed for him. I'm very extra, so I tend to go hard during festivals, but one could do something as simple as light a candle and read a hymn to Dionysos and watch Netflix, offering the act of watching to him. And once you get the hang of adapting festivals, you can even begin to craft your own. I've met a few people who have done this. Now it is not an easy step and it is what I would consider advanced. <laughs> But if you feel like there's something you want to honor, some deity, some aspect of a deity, some myth that you want to honor in a festival and holiday and ritual format, you can go ahead and do that, form your own traditions. And by looking at these questions, the purpose, the time, the expression, as well as the basic ritual format, you can begin to do that in a way that makes sense for your practice and also kind of fits into the general way that festivals worked. Honestly, I think the best way to celebrate festivals is to find a way that means something to you, that works for you. And you can feel free to experiment. My Dionysia looked very different this year than how it did last year. And I'm sure next year it will change again. I just find what matters to me in it. Celebration, joy, and knowing that it will change again. You don't have to be afraid of festivals. There's no Archon who's going to yell at you and audit your festival. Make it as complex or as simple as suits you. I hope this video was helpful and have a happy holidays, all of the holidays, <laughs> whichever ones that you celebrate. And I'll see you again right before the new year. With that, goodbye.